if George Floyd had at the beginning when they got him out of the car and went to put him in the police car if he had just sidled into the car and slid in there and got, you know, let them put his legs in he would be alive today and you know that's true but imagine a situation where if you said the wrong thing about the case according to one person you could potentially lose your job Connie Gardner, our next guest, is in jeopardy of losing hers because she said something, I believe, totally reasonable about this case. Connie Gardner joins us right now. She's a special education teacher at Lathrop High School in Fairbanks, Alaska. Uh, Ms. Gardner, uh, thank you so much for being with us. How are you? Uh, thank you. I'm fine. So look, I'm so sorry you went through this. Uh, we're going to play the portion, <laughs> allegedly controversial in a moment, but just if you okay. would set the scene for us, this is April 28th, and this is just a, a normal Zoom class because of COVID, right? Yes, it's a blended class. So there were students in the classroom and students on Zoom. And how many students altogether? And I guess some parents were involved as well, right? 15 students. How long have you been teaching at the school? Eight years. Um, four years at this school. All right. So uh, it's just another day of COVID instruction. And um, here's what you said about the George Floyd matter that got you in trouble. Uh, part one. I do not agree that Derek, that the Chauvin guy was right. I think he abused his authority. And I think that he, that he, went too far and I think that he was complicit in George Floyd's death. I think that were many factors that contributed to it and that was one of them. But if George Floyd had at the beginning when they got him out of the car and went to put him in the police car if he had just sidled into the car and slid in there and got, you know, let them put his legs in, he would be alive today. And you know that's true. And Connie Gardner, that is a factual statement. That is, I mean, inarguable. You are 100% uh, correct. Can I just ask you, you didn't get in trouble. You got in trouble really for the content of what you said. Not that this topic was brought up and it had nothing to do with the subject at hand, right? Um, I got in trouble because the, the parent who recorded the video called and made a complaint. And the complaint was your opinion, not about, well, they shouldn't be talking about this uh, in class because you were talking about something kind of roughly related to this, uh, accusations, criminal justice, correct? Yes, I was. What was the topic, please? Um, we had just seen the movie To Kill a Mockingbird. We didn't have time to read it. I teach students with reading uh, disabilities and writing disabilities. And uh, so we saw the movie instead, and we were talking about the, you know, racism in the, in the movie, how um, the Jim Crow laws were at that point in time, and how, um, how it was... You know, it was a very sad time for our country. And we got to the point where we were discussing how Tom Robinson, one of the main characters, was killed. And when one student, you know, responded to that question and said, well, you know, he was shot in the back trying to escape. Another student said, well, that's just exactly what's happening in our in today. Right. So this and is something so, that so naturally that. came up related to To Kill a Mockingbird. Anybody can see how someone might bring up current events. And here's the next part of the conversation that, uh, again, got you in trouble. Uh, I totally disagree with this, by the way, that you should be in trouble and under suspension right now. We'll get to that. But part two, please. Justly or unjustly, if the cops come and they say, I'm taking you to jail, then you put your hands behind your back, you let them cuff you, you get in the cop car, and you go and call your parents when they give you your phone call. That's what you do to stay alive. Everybody, white, black, brown, I don't care what color you are. That, by the way, is potentially life-saving advice. 
Connie. Uh, it really is. So we'll play the clip where a mother uh, gets upset because you're having, you have the nerve to speak about this and you're white. And she thinks that white people can't talk like this somehow and somehow that's not racist. We'll get to that. But uh, they brought you in and what did they say? How did they suspend you? How did they put it to you? Um, it was at the end of that day and I knew that the investigation was already underway because one of my paraprofessionals, well, not mine, but one of the paraprofessionals who works in the classroom had um, gone out of the classroom for a few minutes and came back and said, they've already questioned me about this. So I knew the parent had made a complaint and I knew I was going to be put on uh, administrative leave until it was sorted out. You know, parents complain about stuff all the time when you're a teacher, right? I mean, it's not, it's part of the job almost, and everybody is kind of ultra sensitive these days, but you are right now under suspension. No indication when the suspension will be lifted or when you'll come back? None at all. You are being paid right now or are you not? I am being paid. All right. So here's the part where the mother, uh, one of the moms, uh, gets upset and takes issue with your race, which I think is uh, deplorable that, that she should mention this, but here we go. Um, Ms. Gardner, I don't feel like um, you're really able to address um, with you being a white woman. No, so I am a woman of color. That's where you're wrong. I, I am a woman of color who has lived in the South. I am a woman of color who has lived in the South, who was born and raised in the South, who experienced racism firsthand, even when I was a child, even when I was a child. And so some of the things that you are saying, I feel like you are very uneducated on, and I don't feel like that you are able to address these um, these things that are going on in the world today, especially correctly, because you have a different you have a different perception of what is going on. I have to point out to that woman, and she said she's a woman of color, that not all people of color agree with her, <laughs> and not all people of Caucasians might agree with us, Connie. It seems very obvious. Um, did you realize you had a big problem on your hand potentially uh, when she started to, you know, get emotional like that? I did. And it wasn't very long after that. She continued to rant like that. And, and I had to um, I had to close her out of the Zoom meeting the, my students were getting visibly upset. Their teacher was being berated and they were they weren't happy. You know, it's one thing if LeBron James has a debate with Donald Trump Jr. on Twitter about this stuff and, and, and they can fight it out and they do and we watch, but when it starts to impact people with regular jobs in the real world, I think it's extremely unsettling, scary, downright scary. How has the community been? Fairbanks, Alaska, this has gotta be the talk of the town. Are you on your own? Do you feel like you're supported? What's it like? Up until just recently, I did feel very alone. I mean, I have my husband and my son here in Fairbanks, and um, I hadn't heard very much from many of my coworkers. A couple of them were supportive, but I hadn't heard very much from anyone else. And, um, you know, all of the negative things that I was seeing on the YouTube um, video and then these the local newspaper did a story and there were, you know, some negative comments there. But then I started to realize that most of the comments, probably 80 percent, were su very supportive. And, you know, people were saying, what's wrong with what she said? I don't hear anything racist in it. Well, you are not alone. And some people are scared to come forward, and I'm sorry that's the case. That's the situation that our country finds itself in. Uh, there is a GoFundMe page that has been set up um, in your name, and uh, you can go look, Connie Gardner's legal fees and expenses. Are you thinking about a lawsuit? Tell us a little bit about the legal fees, and then I'm sorry we gotta go, but please keep in touch, Connie. What expenses are we talking about here? Well, I have been defamed. Um, I have been permanently injured, and I am going to 
take it as far as I can take it through the court system. I told my students that you, uh, you know, you fight your fights the, in the right way through the legal system, and that's what I plan to do. I know you just watched the movie, the class watched the movie. Maybe we should all read the book, To Kill a Mockingbird, which has something to do with not giving in to the mob. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Connie Gardner, so appreciate you uh, and what you're doing. I'm sorry this has happened, but who knows? Maybe something magnificent can come as a result. Connie Gardner, Lathrop High School. Uh, Lathrop. Sorry. <laughs> sorry? Lathrop. Ah, L-A-T, Lathrop. Um, when I get up to Fairbanks, I'll uh, get it right next time. Connie, okay. thank you very much, and um, stay in touch, okay? Thank you. All right, all the best. We'll be right back. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV, because we're real news for real people.